The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. Here's great news. Tonight, Parquet Margarine is announcing a sensational new $83,500 prize contest. 1,170 separate prizes, including 20 brand new 1951 Ford Victorias. Fun to enter. Anyone may win. Full details in a few minutes. Have paper and pencil ready. Parquet, you know, is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Wonderful as a spread, a seasoning, or shortening. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. Well, the temperature got down to zero in Summerfield last night. And this morning, as the first rays of the frosty dawn creep into his room, the great Gildersleeve stirs in his bed, pulls the blankets closer around his ears, and cautiously opens one eye. You are this. You, what time is it? Quarter to seven. I can sleep for another 15 minutes. Who's calling at this time of the morning? Well, I'm not going to answer it. I'm sleeping. Telephone's ringing! That Bronco. As if I didn't know. Telephone, Bernie! Is that the telephone? Yo, for heaven's sake. Want me to get it, Bernie? I'll get it! I got it! What a family. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be glad when Margie's home from the hospital with the twins. And they'll have to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it was the wrong number. You peace at last. Let's go at it. Ah. news. Leroy, I was sound asleep. I got news, Unc. That was my teacher on the phone. No school today. What's this? No school. The pipes are frozen. Oh. oh, my goodness. Isn't that keen? Yes, yes. Now run along like a good boy and let me finish my nap. Ten minutes left. Well, it's better than nothing. Unc? Huh? What? with you today? Yes, I suppose. Oh, boy. I'll run along. Okay. You go ahead and sleep. Thank you. I won't let anybody disturb you. You're a good boy. Hey, buddy, I'm going to the office with us. The offer. Leroy. What's that? What do you want, huh? You answered the phone. That's your alarm clock. I got it. Time to get up. Time to get up. You great Scott, this is like living in a belfry. Answer that alarm clock. That's the telephone. We'll shut it off. Telephone! Happy! Gee, what a noisy family. Look who's talking. She? For me? Be right there. <laughs> Give me my rope. You one side, Leroy. What a character. You <laughs> what girl do I know who'd be calling Bronco? Here you are, Miss Gilsley. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Hello? Hello, Wonky. Oh, Marjorie. It's you. Well, certainly. What's the matter, Uncle Mort? Did I wake you up? Me? No, of course not. Why are you awake so early in the hospital? Awake? <laughs> I finished breakfast an hour ago. I have wonderful news, Anki. News? Dr. Evans and Dr. Charles were in this morning, 
And I can come home today. You, 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 today? And bring the twins. Really? Where is it, Uncle? What happened? Marjorie's coming home today. Miss Marjorie's coming home. Yeah, today, Bertie, you're bringing the twins. I knew it. I knew it. Today's the day. Yeah, but uh. Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Unky. Tell Bronco I'll be ready at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. I'll be there, my dear. Don't you worry about a thing. And one of the babies on the way home. Yeah, I'll bring Bertie. Just leave everything to your old uncle. Right, George, it's going to be good to have you home. Thanks, Unky. You'll tell Bronco, won't you? You bet. See you at 11 o'clock. Bye, Unky. Bye-bye. Bertie, throw the breakfast on the table fast. You and I have to be at the hospital at 11 o'clock. Yes, sir. You just watch Bertie. She's going to make them vittles fly. Hey, but Unky... You, Leroy, don't stand there and get a move on. This is the big day. We've got to hurry. Yeah, but... Bronco! Oh, Bronco! Yes? That was Marjorie on the phone. We're bringing her home today. Marjorie's coming home? Oh, my wife, coming home with the babies. What will I do? I better get dressed. Where are my clothes? And tell her I'll call her right back. But Bronco, she's already... Oh, what's the difference? The way he's going, he won't even find his clothes. <laughs> Unc. Leroy, what is it? You promised I could go to the office with you today. Yes, but Leroy, I'm not going to the office. I have to go to the hospital and bring Marjorie and the babies home. Why can't she come home on the bus? But... <laughs> you don't realize, my boy, how important this is. Your sister and those babies are a precious cargo. We haven't been able to do much up to now, but by George, this is where we take over. But why does she have to come home today? Well, because we want her to come home today. You said we could go to the office. Well, we'll go to the office some other day. I'll have to go to school on another day. Those pipes will thaw out by tomorrow. Yofer. <laughs> Leroy, stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about somebody else. Think about Marjorie. Yeah, this is no time to be selfish. We all have to pitch in and help. You too. You mean I can help? Sure you can. There's a lot of things to do. More than I can handle. Well, gee, let's get going. What do I do first? Yeah, first go upstairs and get out of that bathrobe. Put your clothes on. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're a natural-born executive. You sure know how to make things hum. On the ball every second. Yes, sir. You get a mind like a steel trap. Excuse me, Pepper! Yeah, I'm coming, Bertie. Hey, Uncle, you gonna eat in your bathrobe? Your bathroom. Oop, where are my clothes? Let's see now, Bertie. We only have a couple of hours. A lot of things to do before we bring Marjorie home. Well, I got Miss Marjorie's clothes all packed in a suitcase, the one she's going to wear home. Yeah, good, Bertie, good. And I can just see myself sitting in that car holding one of them babies. I'm going to be nervous like an old mother hen. Well, you won't have to worry, Bertie. Not with me driving. Oh, you driving Miss Marjorie home? You, absolutely, Bertie. I've been waiting a long time, looking forward to the day I'd pull into the driveway with Marjorie and her babies. Yes, sir. I'm finished with breakfast, Unc. Where, where do I start? What can I do? Well, somebody's got to set those two little beds up for the baby. Yeah, yeah, Keen. Where's the screwdriver and the pliers? I'll set up the beds. No, you better let me do that, Leroy. Huh? Yeah, that's kind of a tricky job. Oh, Unc. No, my boy, we wouldn't want the beds to fall down. Roll the little tykes out on the floor. I know how to put beds together. Mine falls apart all the time. <laughs> There's a lot of other things to do, Leroy. Oh, certainly. Plenty of things. You let me take care of the bed. We're going to need two hot water bottles, one for each of the twins. Now, I'll get the hot water bottles. Now, wait a minute, Leroy. There's only one of them hot water bottles around here. I can't find the other one. I know where it is. Down in the basement with my tent. It, with your tent? Yeah, I was using it for a canteen. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we can't use that one. We'll have to go over to Judge Hooker's and borrow his. Okay, I'll go over to Judge Hooker's. No, Leroy, we haven't much time. I'll take care of the hot water bottles. You said I could do something. Well, you can. There's lots of things to do. We need some things from the drugstore. Cotton and baby lotion. Well, give me some money. I'll go down to Mr. Peavy's. Oh, Leroy, why do you insist on doing all the difficult things? You probably forget half the things you went for. I'll write them down. There's no need for you to go. I'll stop in at Peavy's on my way back from Judge Hooker's. Holy cow, Unc, you're doing everything not letting anybody else have any fun. Now, Leroy, that's the wrong attitude. Isn't it a question of having fun? We're all doing this for Marjorie and the babies. We simply want the most capable person to do the job. That's all. Okay. At least I get to ride in the car with you when you bring Marge home. Yeah, but there won't be room for you. You mean I can't even ride with you? 
Leroy, this isn't a picnic. But you get to go. But I'm only going because I have to. It's my duty. All I want is to see Marjorie and the babies brought safely home. It doesn't matter to me who goes. You can say that. You're going. <laughs> Leroy. Leroy, listen. Think how much fun it'll be to stay here. And welcome Marjorie and the babies when they come in the door. Yeah. Oh, there you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I just talked to Marge. Everything's all set. You all set? Yes, sir. Mr. Bullard is letting me use his Cadillac, and I'm picking Marge up at the hospital at 11 o'clock. You do you use your Cadillac? You're picking her up? That's right. We'll make a little bed in the back seat for Marge and one of the babies, and Bertie can sit with me in the front seat and hold the other one. Good arrangement, don't you think? Well... The fact is, Bronco, yeah, I sort of planned on going myself. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I'm afraid there won't be room for you. You won't be room, huh? I hope you don't mind, Mr. Gildersleeve. No. No. Ah, think how much fun it'll be to stay here and welcome Marge and the babies when they come in the door. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be right back. In just a few minutes, full details of Parquet Margarine's easy-to-enter great $83,000 prize contest. Get paper and pencil now. Don't miss a word that may help you win one of those big, big prizes. Gildersleeve had it all planned that he would drive to the hospital this morning to pick up Marjorie and the new twins. But it seems Marjorie's husband, Bronco, had the same idea, so there wasn't much the water commissioner could do. You pushy kid. He wants to do everything himself. You listen to him. Showing off. Honking. Just because he borrowed Bullard's fancy car. Tell Mr. Bronco, I'll be right there, excuse me. You're all right, Bertie. Messenger boy. That's all I am around here. Bertie will be right out, Bronco. Thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sure. There's plenty of room in that car. I could have sat in there someplace. Darn kid is just trying to hog the whole thing for himself, that's all. Sure wish you could go along, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, no, I don't mind. I had a lot of things to do anyway. He knows darn well I wouldn't go. The only reason he said that. Sometimes I think that boy is a little crooked. <laughs> if you planned on going, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll stay here. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of it, Bronco. You go ahead. He's smooth. <laughs> well, here we go, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> we're going to get the babies. Well, have a good trip. Yes, sir, we're going to get the babies. We'll be waiting for you. See you later, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ta-ta! at him, showing off his big, fat hydromatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gildersleeve, go in the house. You're collecting icicles. Yeah, I've got a good mind not even to be here when they come home. If they don't need me, why should I hang around? If they think they can get along without me, just let them try. They'll be plenty sorry. What are you doing, Leroy? Packing up some stuff. You what for? Moving down in the cellar. <laughs> in the cellar? Sure. I'm just an old shoe around here, so I'm going down with the other old shoes. <laughs> now, Leroy, you mustn't feel that way. Nobody needs me for nothing. No, that's not true, my boy. We're all needed. Every one of us. If we just make ourselves needed... We have to look for ways to help other people. I'm moving down the cellar. When they bring those babies home, I don't even want to see them. You're all right. You go down in the cellar. Hope you find a comfortable spot. <laughs> okay. Let us hear from you now and then. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, boy's nose is out of joint. He's jealous of the babies. Thinks he isn't needed. Well, he'll come around. Right, George, I feel better myself, though. You, why should I get steamed up just because Bronco wanted to drive Marjorie home from the hospital? There's lots more important things to do than that. Say, yeah, I'll bet Bronco went off and forgot all about the really important things. The hot water bottle from the judge. The list of things from the drugstore. That's just like a kid. <laughs> get going, Gildersleeve. I'd like to know what they do without you around here. <laughs> Come on, Judge. Yeah, the old goat probably got his jumper caught in his rowing machine. <laughs> well, Gilday. Hello, Judge. Come in, old friend. Yeah, thank you. What brings you out this fine, nippy morning, Gilday? Oh, you know, I'm busy as a bird dog, Judge. Marjorie's coming home from the hospital this morning. Yes, so I hear. At last you'll have all your lovely little family together under one roof. Well, it's going to be fine having Marjorie and the babies home, but they're sure keeping me on the run. Those adorable babies. I went to the hospital yesterday to see them, Gildy. You? Yeah, it was during visiting hours. The nurse was holding the babies up one by one for the parents to see. Through the glass, you know. Yes, Judge, I've been there every day for the past two weeks. There must have been four or five proud fathers viewing their offspring. And me, of course. Yeah, well, and Judge... And when the nurse held up Marjorie's twins for me to look at, she smiled so prettily, and I nodded. You, oh, my goodness. All the other fathers looked at me as much as to say, Are those yours? <laughs> no, sir. And I didn't say no. <laughs> Judge! I simply couldn't resist, Gildy. What a glorious feeling it must be for Bronco to be the father of two such fine children. Yeah, oh, we agree on that, Judge. But Bronco's still just a boy, an irresponsible kid. He forgot all the important things. It's just a good thing I was around, that's all. What do you forget, Gildy? Yeah, well, that's why I came over, Judge. They need an extra hot water bottle when they bring the twins home. He went off and forgot all about it. No, he didn't. He, you what? He stopped by here on his way to the hospital, and he picked it up. He did? Yes, indeed. What else did he forget? Well, plenty of things. Yeah, there's a list of things a mile long they need from the drugstore. It is up to me to go get them. <laughs> Irresponsible kids. Yeah, I'll see you later, Judge. I have to rush over to Petey. Maybe I can help, Gilda. No, thank you, Judge. I can handle it. <laughs> Darn Bronco who wants to do everything. Couldn't even let somebody else get the hot water bottle. Yeah, by George, I'll get the stuff from Peavy's. I'll show him he isn't the only one in the family that means anything. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Oh, I need a lot of things, Peavy. Marjorie's bringing the twins home this morning. Yeah, but there's a lot of excitement around your house. Yeah, Bronco was running around in circles. Yeah, I had to stay home from the office to keep things under control. You don't say. Yes, sir. You get your pencil sharpened up, Petey. I've got a big order. Mm, very well. Yeah, two boxes of cotton, three packages of safety pins. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, write these down, Petey. Cotton, safety pins. Yeah, two bottles of baby lotion, uh, one for the boy and one for the girl. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, talcum powder, a lilac fragrance. Are you sure you want to buy all these things? Yeah, of course I do, Petey. Somebody has to do it. Well, all I can say is you're going to have an awful lot of cotton and safety pins around your house. Yours is? Bronco was in this morning and bought the same things you're buying. Peavy, <laughs> he didn't. Yes, he did. You know, Mr. Gildersleeve Bronco is a very capable young man. Yes, yes. Anything else I can do for you today? No, nothing, Peavy. Yeah, I guess I'll go home. <laughs> They're not home yet. Yeah, I'm glad of it. They'd just be in the way. An old extra uncle getting underfoot. I wonder where I can go. Are you up? Leroy, where are you? In the cellar. In the cellar. Gillisley, that's where you belong. Down with the rest of the junk. What you doing, Uncle? 
Yeah, I'm coming down. Move over, my boy. What's the matter, Unc? Yeah, I feel pretty low, Leroy. You and I are just excess baggage around this house, I guess. Pull up a box and sit down, Unc. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were right, Leroy. Nobody needs us. It's okay. We've got each other. You try to do your best, work and help. And then when they bring the babies home, you've forgotten. Yeah. We just don't matter anymore. Yeah. Let's run away. <laughs> well, why run away? Nobody'd miss us. Somebody pulled in the driveway. In their home. You wonder who carried the babies in. Who cares? Let me help you, Marge. Oh, I'm all right. You carry baby. I got this one. Everybody's got a baby but me. <laughs> what you say, Unc? Yeah, nothing. Where are Leroy and Uncle Mark? They were here when I left. Mr. Gildersleeve? Leroy, we're home. Don't say nothing, Unc. Did you hear that, Leroy? That was one of the babies. Yeah. Maybe a pin sticking him. <laughs> you wonder what they're doing up there. They don't need us. No, I suppose not. You can put the babies in their beds, Bert. Bed? Holy smoke. I forgot to put the beds together. Leroy, you forgot to put the beds together. How do you like that? That irresponsible kid. I'll get the screwdriver, grab the pliers. Come on, Leroy. <laughs> Kitties, move over, Bronco. Let me at that bed. Yeah, let us at it. I can't seem to get them together. We got screwdrivers. You hold that end up, Leroy. I got it. The little rascal stopped crying. He's watching his uncle. That's me. Well, the other one's watching me. Yeah, aren't you? Little bright eyes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Unk, the bed. Oh, yes. You put the other end on, Leroy. Hurry up. Yeah, I'll get the mattresses in. Land, I've never seen anybody work so fast. You have, this is an emergency, Bertie. And you know me when there's an emergency. And me, too. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll make up the beds. Hand me the blankets, Bronco. Blankets? Blankets. Well, here they are, Marjorie. By George, I have to do everything around here. Well, thank you, Unky. That's a good thing you and Leroy were around, Mr. Gildersleeve. I might never have gotten those beds together. Yeah, you can't be expected to do everything, my boy. Uncle Mort, where were you and Leroy when we came in? Yeah, where were you, Mr. Gilsey? Oh, we were around. The beds are ready, Bertie. We can put them in. Shh. The little darlings are asleep. I'll put them in bed, Bertie. Yeah, let me put them in, Bertie. Let me do it. I'll put them in. Come on, honey. You go. Oh, look at them, Bronco. You go. Yeah. Two of them. <laughs> Maybe we'd better let them sleep. Yeah. Come on, March. Yeah, we'll be along in a minute, children. Haven't had a chance to look at the little tykes. So those are babies. <laughs> Your niece and nephew. Yeah, how nicely they went into the little beds. Yeah. They didn't put up much of a fight, did they? <laughs> yeah, they're good babies. wonder what they're dreaming about. Yeah, they haven't been in this world long enough to dream, but they will. Unc, what are those beads around their necks? Well, those beads have letters on them, Leroy. The hospital put those on. They spell out the baby's name. What are their names? I, I don't know. Let's look. The beads just say, boy... And girl. Gee, they got to have better names than that. Yeah, they will, my boy. Marjorie and Bronco haven't been able to decide, I guess. But somebody will think of some fine names for them. You wait and see. Great Gildersleeve will be back after this important announcement. Well, someone has to name those twins, and that's why Parquet announces a series of big prize contests. By naming the twins, you may win a 1951 Ford Victoria or one of 1,150 other prizes. 
Yes, four big, beautiful Ford Victorias will be won each week for five weeks. Twenty Fords in all. And every week for five weeks, Parquet will also award ten General Electric portable dishwashers, twenty General Electric triple whip mixers, one hundred crisp new twenty-dollar bills, and one hundred crisp new ten-dollar bills. Eleven hundred and seventy prizes in all. Here's how you enter. Think of names for these babies. One's a boy, one's a girl. Get an entry blank from your grocer. It will tell you how prize-winning entries are selected, or use plain paper if you prefer. Send your names for the twins, plus your own name and address, to Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. With each entry, enclose the red end flap from a package of Parquet Margarine. And here's something special. If you'd like to try for a $500 cash bonus in addition to the first prize, include two Parquet red end flaps. One end flap entitles your entry to full consideration for a Ford Victoria... Two red end flaps entitle you to $500 extra if your entry should win one of the weekly first prizes. Remember the address, Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. First week's contest ends at midnight, March 17th. So hurry, name the twins. Get your first entry off tomorrow. This is Gildersleeve again, friends. Mighty nice of you folks to help us out with names for the twins. We hope you think of some good ones, and I know you will. By the way, speaking of the younger generation, this week marks the 39th birthday of the Girl Scouts in America. 39 years of building good citizens. Girl Scouts everywhere, keep up the good work. We're all proud of you. Hey, Unc. Oh, what is it, Leroy? Telegram for you. For me? Well, I wonder what this is. Uh, let me see now. Let me say, uh, dear Throckmorton, remember me? Remember the girl who sang to you one rainy afternoon? Remember the girl who sang the song, The Girl in the Woods? Yeah, I'll be back in Summerfield next week, and maybe you'll hear it again. Affectionately, Katie Lee. Katie Lee. Yeah, she's coming back next week. See you then. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Woolen Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Mary Lee Robb, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Next time you raid the icebox or sit down for a between-meal snack, don't forget to add a little craft prepared mustard to that cold meat you eat or that sandwich you make. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Salad mustard with that delicately spiced mild flavor and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. Then for extra zest in meat or cheese, just add a little mustard You'll add a lot of tang by Kraft's prepared mustard. Hear the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the unsilent butler. You bet your life it's Groucho Marx. Hear him on NBC.